Good morning, Trinity. It is so good to be all with all of you in worship today. I want you to know, Trinity, that this is the day that the Lord has made. As we enter this time of worship, may we exhale our worries and inhale the Spirit of God that surrounds us. May we find here a space for release and reflection, a space to empty our souls and create a refuge for Sabbath rest. We have several good announcements that we get to make this week, and I am excited to be able to stand here and make these announcements to you this morning. First, on behalf of the Reopening Task Force, the Reopening Task Force is very excited to share with you about our worship plans in the upcoming weeks. After carefully and prayerfully reviewing the surveys that you completed, and thank you very much for completing those sur uh, surveys, we had over 140 sur uh, surveys come back in. And heeding the advice of our state medical leaders, we are excited to announce that in-person worship at Trinity will resume on Sunday, July the 12th. But it's going to be a little bit different than normal worship here at Trinity. Our worship, when we come back on July the 12th in person, will actually be outside at Parks Place. So I'm going to go ahead this morning and start talking a little bit about what this in-person outside worship is going to work, look like. So first, there will be registration for that service. So you will receive a registration email. It will be a sign-up genius or something like that. So please, if you want to be here and have a spot reserved for that in-person worship, please fill that out and get it back to us as soon as possible. The good thing about being outside, I don't think we have to set a number, which is a wonderful thing. We just need to know that you are coming. Second, BYOC. Bring your own chair or canopy. We anticipate seating under the Parks Place Shelter will be used by our more senior and uh, members or our at-risk church members. So please bring your own chair. But if you do need a chair, there will be a spot on our, work, on our registration pad. So just mark that you do need a chair and chairs will be made available for you that day. We, won't, we will be outside and we do live in, in Col the Columbia area and it gets hot. So we do want you to stay hydrated during our service. So we encourage you to either bring bottled water or we will have small bottles of water available for you as well. We will still do social distancing. All social distancing that you have heard about over these last however many months, three months now, I believe, still apply. So we will, so make sure that you're placing your chairs or your family's chairs at least six feet apart from one another once you arrive. We do highly recommend and expect that you wear a mask even though we are outside as just another level of safety and assurance for everyone there. We will also have a supply of masks available for anyone who might need a mask when you get there. I've seen the masks. They're kind of cool. And also for those of you that are not quite yet comfortable with gathering with a large crowd, we understand that. But we don't want you to miss out either. So we will continue to be re live streaming and, rec or, and recording our services for all of you who will still be staying at home and worshiping with us from home. So you will be able to continue to live stream here on Facebook Live this morning. And you can also find after the live stream, maybe probably on Monday, our service also on YouTube, Trinity's YouTube channel, and also on Trinity's website. So you have... Lots of options to continue to worship with us. As the body of Christ at Trinity Blythewood, we will be encouraging one another to participate in a covenant for returning to worship uh, that we have adapted from P Pinnacle Leadership Associates. Uh, we will assume the best in one another and be patient with each other as we navigate our new reality. We encourage you and we want you to not come to church if you are not feeling well. Please stay at home. Of course, we will keep six feet distance from those not in our family. We will sanitize our hands when we enter the building or worship space. 
Unfortunately, we have to refrain from hugging or shaking hands. We wear masks when we are indoors or outdoors together. We are looking to offer alternatives to the practices of passing our offering plates and communion elements in our bulletins. And we encourage you to continue to worship and do small online gatherings as you can during this time. So be on the lookout over the next... This is the first of several written communication and verbal communications and social, commu uh, social media communications about returning to worship. As more and more details get worked out over the following weeks, you will see lots of communications so you will know what to expect when we return on July the 12th. And most importantly, we ask that you remember... Things will look and feel and be different from what we have experienced previously here at Trinity. But the one thing that will not change, whether we are worshiping on Facebook Live, whether we are worshiping outside at Parks Place, or whether we're worshiping here in our beautiful sanctuaries, we want you to remember that the Spirit of the Lord will be with us wherever we are at. Amen. We are getting close to our Trinity Rocky Railway Virtual Bible School for our children. That will be on July the 13th through the 16th. Uh, our lessons will be posted each day starting in the mornings at 10 o'clock. Um, registration is needed for that just so we can prepare because all the kids will get to come and pick up a packet to have at home to work with us through that. So please register for that. There is a registration on Facebook. It was also in our newsletter as well, and we will probably send that out a little closer to time as well. Uh, we will let you know the dates for coming and picking up the take-home kits for all the participants very soon. So we want to encourage you now to get your tickets to join us and learn how Jesus' power gives us hope, which I think is a wonderful message for our children right now, isn't it? And finally, we are thrilled and honored to announce that our Trinity Hero of the Week is Nancy Lewis. As many of you know, Nancy has sacrificed tirelessly during this pandemic at a local hospital and in fact had to self-isolate herself for a time while battling the coronavirus, which she has beaten. Pastor Clyde remembers speaking with her while she was quarantining and was struck by how guilty she felt because her colleagues were on the front line and she could not be there with them. She has all the quality and epitomizes everything we need in our caregivers. In a word, Nancy Lewis is amazing. Let's all reach out to Nancy this week and thank her for her selfless commitment to Christ and community. And now let us bow our heads and close our eyes as we invite the Holy Spirit into our places of worship today. Holy One, in whom we bear our souls, we take comfort and courage in your presence. Through your love and light, we are able to explore what it takes to place our trust entirely in you. Help us lovingly put before all else, put you before all else as we journey the corridors of uncertainty, knowing that your steadfast love shepherds us on paths unknown. Amen. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displays. 
laid. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. This is the first time I've been in the sanctuary since March, and my mask is caught on my earring. <laughs> um, the title of this section of our program is this, The Introduction to the Celebration. And it is with mixed emotions that we call this a celebration of Pastor Clyde's retirement. The time has come for us as a congregation to say farewell to Pastor Clyde Scott, our senior pastor, and his lovely wife, Alona. Why, while today is bittersweet, we want to recognize and we want to celebrate what their lives have meant to us. Clyde, we celebrate your years of ministry and service to the Lord, 
and not only at Trinity, but your many years as a chaplain in the United States Armed Forces. We recognize your friendship and the difference that you have made in the lives of so many people as pastor, preacher, elder, teacher, counselor. Surely you will be remembered. Alona, we celebrate the great contribution that you have made to us through Mom's Morning, Date Night, Susanna Wesley Circle, Hospitality Committee, Fall Fest, just to name a few. And your ever-present smile and your uplifting spirit to all of us. But especially in your role as Clyde's number one supporter, confidant, and cheerleader. Now, as the day dawns on the next chapter of your lives, may the Lord's blessings be upon you as you follow in his way. May you find joy and peace as he inspires you every day. Today, we are here to celebrate you. As you close the door to the past, you open the door to the future, you take a big, deep breath and you step on through to the next chapter of your lives.
Okay. Getting emotional, Clyde. I'm sorry. Whew. Clyde, when I was asked to offer some words of appreciation and thanksgiving, I, I've been thinking a lot this week. So I wanted to kind of talk about, I think, how our relationships evolved over this past year. It's literally one year ago that I set foot in Trinity myself as your associate pastor. But that wasn't the first time that I met you. That's the first time that I met Clyde. I met Clyde many months, probably three to four months before I would officially start here. So we and I could start building a relationship as Clyde is my senior pastor and I as the associate. And we met at... Applebee's, I believe it was. And I remember the first thing, I met, besides the meeting itself, but the first thing that really stood out to me is when I got back in my car and I saw Clyde getting into his truck. He had a Batman sticker on the back of his truck. And I was like, all right, he's cool. <laughs> but at that meeting, I knew that Clyde and I would be colleagues, good colleagues together, because during that meeting, as we sat and we talked about... God, I knew Clyde was a man who loved God. And as we talked about our callings and our call story, I knew that Clyde was a man that took this calling to be a senior pastor here at Trinity United Methodist Church. I knew it was one of the most important things in his life next to his family. And I knew that he loved you, so I knew that, that Clyde was a colleague, my colleague in Christ. And we began the ministry to get a ministry together here. And I saw that each and every day that Clyde loved God and that Clyde loved each and every member of you here at Trinity United Methodist Church. And it was so important for him to give the best worship experience to honor God and for all of you to experience God each and every day. So we first started as wonderful colleagues. As I try to, to follow what Clyde was doing. But that colleague relationship started changing the longer that I was here. It became a colleague and Clyde also became a mentor to me. Clyde became a mentor coming and to my office and talking to me about sermons and, and giving me a lot of good positive feedback, but also ways to continue to craft and continue to grow my sermons. We would have many conversations about what pastoral care looks like as we talked about the needs of the church each and every week and how that I could offer the best pastoral care that I could. And most importantly, Clyde gave me lots of good mentorship over how to be a leader, how to be a leader in the church. And the best bit of advice that, that I remember and that I will take with me each and every day, Clyde, from now until I leave the ministry is to have spiritual patience, to allow God time to work. And I thank you for that. And then as we went and from colleague to, to, be, to be mentor and mentee, along the way we've become good friends. We have bonded over Batman. We've bonded over Star Wars. We've bonded over Legos. I remember back at Christmas, Clyde sitting in the movie theater over in Sound Hills going, Ha ha, I'm already here before you. <laughs> And I sent him a meme that said, spoil it, you must not. We, we have a friendship in that, but we have a so much more because over this time as becoming colleagues and mentor and mentee, we've also cared for one another. We've listened to one another. We've shared each other's triumphs. We've shared in each other's struggles and some tragedies. We've prayed for one another. We've sat and we've listened to one another. So Clyde, you are my colleague, my mentor, and my friend. Thank you for this past year and everything that you have done. And I wish you nothing but the best 
as you go on out into this next journey in your life, enjoy your retirement. Have fun. Have that needed time with Alona and all of your family members. And I want you to know, even though we are celebrating retirement, that does not mean that we will not see each other again. Retirement, to me, this time means I just see you soon. I'm definitely going to see you soon because I do need to get up to that lake house and still see that Lego Death Star. Thank you, my brother in Christ. I love you. It is kind of emotional standing up here doing this. Um, I'm chair of worship team, and um, I remember a couple of years ago, you had just started, <clears throat> and Bob was going to be taking over as um, church council chair, and you called and asked if I would chair the committee, and I, I called Bob, and I said, really? <laughs> I'm not sure I want to do this. And he said, you've got this. And I said, all right, I'll do it. And so I went down that journey not knowing what all we were going to accomplish in the last couple of years. So on behalf of the worship team and the congregation, we want to thank you for the time we've had together. You came to us as an interim, and we are lucky to have you appointed to us until this time of your retirement. Your ministry, guidance, and care for our congregation saw us through a transition at Trinity. Our team worked well together from minor behind the scenes tasks to ensure a meaningful worship experience for our congregation to larger game-changing decisions. We crossed a gigantic bridge together and took one of the largest leaps of faith this church has prayed for and launched a third service in a contemporary format. While it was not specifically in your background as a pastor or a chaplain, you embraced the service and gave your undying support, and we really appreciate that. We thank you for praying with us and for us. We thank you for being human. You have showed that to us and sharing with us the same fears and worries that we have on a daily basis. This is not how we wanted to do this, and I can only imagine how difficult it must be to retire in these circumstances. Just because we aren't all in the building together, by no means we aren't all together as one congregation. So as we say, see you later. Please remember Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and can you to help them. Pastor Clive, we know you will continue your journey even if it's not in the pulpit. Thank you for your leadership. May God bless you and your family during your own transition into retirement. Enjoy it and have fun. And as my mom says, she highly recommends it to everybody. So thank you. Good morning. My name's Robin Lupia. And I'm here today as a representative of the Quilt Group, uh, Quilt Ministry. And of course, I came bearing gifts. And guess what the gifts are? Quilts. And I would like to call uh, Ilona up here. Elona, you have contributed so much to this church. Uh, Betty covered it very well. We will miss you. We appreciate everything you've done. And we want to give you a quilt. And thank you. If you want to look at it, you can. Uh, if you want to open it and look at it, or you can take it and look at it later. You know, that's my passion. Actually, we have a whole German shrunk at home that has nothing but fabric. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. Oh, it's my kids. It's a great kids. <laughs> yep. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Picture of the grandkids. Um, there's, there's Brooks. Brandon. There's Bryce. <laughs> oh, this is so nice. Thank you. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Thank you. 
we truly appreciate you, and we are going to miss you. And Pastor Clyde, we have a quilt for you. This is a first. We want to present this quilt to you in appreciation for everything you've done for the quilt ministry and helping get the quilt ministry started. We are going to miss you. Uh, we enjoyed your ministry, your leadership, and you're just a wonderful person. Uh, you're friendly. You're, you know, you're easy to talk to. And thank you so much. It has pictures from Norman Rockwell, and it's called The Four Freedoms. Thank you. Thank you, Robin, and thank you so much, Janet Clark, for bringing this quilt ministry initiative down with you from Maryland. Good morning, Pastor, and good morning, Trinity. It's my pleasure. Um, in fact, I wondered why I was asked to do this, because uh, we have a, a love gift that we would like to give to you as, as you leave us. Um, I played a few rounds of golf with you, and I've enjoyed it very much. And my first thought was to say that I've seen you play golf, and therefore we think you need some help. <laughs> but I decided not to say that. I know it. I have played with Pastor, and he is extraordinary good golfer. He has certainly beat me every time. And so I thought it would be appropriate to tell you that this is so you can enjoy the game even more. So um, as a love gift, we are presenting you with a gift certificate for a new set of golf clubs. Mm. And wow. If I can present that to you, and I'll give a golfers. Thank you. And I thought, I just thought about this, that it's also a gift to Alona because this gets him out of the house. Thank, Thank you, you, Pastor. Thank you. Very much appreciated because essentially in the past, I have golfed with like $300, $250 Walmart golf clubs. This will be a step up. Which explains. <laughs> Sir, uh, I have checked with your CO and your first sergeant, and we are going to give you a pass, three-day pass or more, at the Grove Park Inn for you to enjoy some private time, some enjoy God's gifts out there in nature, and most of all, um, I think you'll enjoy time together. Well, well thank you very much. And, and, wait, wait, I'm not done. <clears throat> As you and I have been in military organizations and in combat, uh, you are most appreciated. <clears throat> For the spiritual gifts that you brought to men and women, on the battlefield at times that it's needed. Thank you for your service. We now have the farewell liturgy that is responsive. I will read and then the congregation will read responsively and it should be on your screen, not just here, but in your homes, wherever you're worshiping. From my heart, 
I thank you all members of Trinity United Methodist Church for the love and support you have shown Ilona and I while ministering among you. I celebrate with you all we have accomplished together and carry with me the joy of having partnered together in ministry for three and a half years. We, we too celebrate, celebrate our, our fruitful, fruitful time, time together, together and, and pray, pray for you and Alona as you retire and continue to do God's work in another setting. We express our gratitude for your time among us. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not leave us with your departure. I encourage you to pray for Reverend Smoke and remind you that he is being appointed during unprecedented times and will need your prayers and support. Ilona and I pray for your ministry at Trinity and know that you will continue to make a difference both in the congregation and community members' lives. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose steadfast love is from everlasting to everlasting, we give you thanks for the cherished memories and commend one another into your care as we move in new directions. Keep us one in your love forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word I ever with thee and thou with me Lord Thou and thou only first in my heart, a great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. Great God of heaven, my victory won, may I reach heaven's joys bright heaven's sun, heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. And now, let us stand wherever you are, before God and before one another, and let us say the words of the Apostles' Creed, which proclaims our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty.
from thence we shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture lesson is from Philippians chapter 1 and verses 3 through 6. Paul writes to those in Philippi, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because you are of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now, and I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. This is the Lord, the word of God for the people of God. Just want to let you know that my sermon is usually four, four and a half pages. I'm not going to apologize, but I've got nine pages in front of me here. You may recall a few months ago, one of my first sermons I preached at the very beginning of self-isolating, I stated that I believed it was one, if not the most difficult sermons I ever had to write. Well, Trinity, that was until today's sermon. Honestly, this past week has been personally, shall I say, a train wreck. Not one of my better ones. Literally, I had a little accident. Normally, I have a very good rough draft of the week's sermon complete already by Wednesday. And to use one of my father's favorite analogies, I would let that sermon percolate the rest of the week, revising and updating it daily. Not this week, church. No, this week I found myself procrastinating in deep denial, coming up with excuses not to write this sermon because, frankly, it was too painful to even think about writing my farewell message to Trinity. To know me is to know that I am not at goodbyes, good at goodbyes. In fact, I have come to loathe them because of the number of tearful farewells we are forced to do when serving in the military. And the events of the past few months have made this even more difficult, as Mary Payton alluded to earlier, for Elon and I, because this pandemic is preventing a proper and traditional farewell from happening. Yes, as I am sure you would agree, we live in strange times. In fact, I cannot remember an event which has such had such a profound effect upon the world in my lifetime, and we know that our lives will never be the same. In my mind, the verses just read from the book of Philippians captures best my three and a half years at Trinity. And God sent Elona and I here for a mission that we, I believe, have faithfully completed, and now we thank God. God, every time we remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of our prayers for all of you, and are confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion. Speaking of mission, We are convinced that God called us here to Trinity for many reasons, but the most critical missions were to first help facilitate healing and reconciliation between members due to the couple of years of unrest and turmoil before my arrival. The second mission I believe God has brought us here to do to accomplish was to take necessary steps to and overdue steps to help facilitate change in leadership at the child care center and now the Trinity Learning Center, which we did within the first six weeks at Trinity. And finally, Mary Payton alluded to it early. We believe God brought us here to help prepare for the coming housing boom in Blythewood, where over 600 homes are being built by starting a third, a contemporary service 
in the youth building, which we have done. As I reflect upon our time here, please allow me to share with you a few thoughts. First and foremost, and most importantly, I encourage you, all of you, to pray and for and support your incoming pastor, Reverend Scott Smoke, and his wife, Jan. I said earlier that this is certainly not the farewell we expected as a result of these strange and challenging times. Well, if you think it is difficult for me transitioning from Trinity to retirement, place yourself in Scott's shoes. Coming to a new appointment during times when the only place deemed, where the only place deemed to safely worship now is outdoors, where congregation members cannot shake hands or hug. And when being introduced, Scott will only see the eyes of his new flock behind masks. Not to mention having to conduct all meetings and ministry initiatives using Zoom and other social media platforms. Since I announced my retirement back in December, I have articulated the fact that I believe that Trinity is on the verge of great spiritual and physical growth. If they appointed a pastor with the spiritual leadership abilities and vision to lead Trinity to the next level. And I want to tell you, I have met with Scott numerous times over the past month and am convinced that he is the perfect individual to be your next senior pastor and I'm expecting great things to happen under his leadership pray for him church he has a monumental task ahead not just transitioning into a new pulpit but doing so in the middle of this pandemic with no end in sight next I want to encourage you to think outside the box and take risks when making decisions. This is especially necessary during these times where the church needs to develop and implement creative and innovative ways to conduct ministries, to minister to the sick and homebound, to help foster the spiritual growth of all who step foot on our campus and continue to support our community where God has placed us. We cannot afford to continue to make decisions based on what has happened in the past, but need to have a vision for what God's hand and feet need for us to do creatively and effectively to minister to all, and then put our vision into action by funding them. I urge you to also remember that spiritual leadership is leading people unto God's agenda. Another reason some churches struggle is that some clergy and laity are more interested in their own agenda rather than God's. So I urge you in all decisions, great and small, to step back and ask yourself, what is motivating you in decisions, in this particular decision, and pray that you will always place God's agenda before your own. As you look back on the history of great spiritual leaders, one common theme of those who are successful are those who always place God's agenda before their own. Now I'm going to do something which I know is risky because I do not have the time to recognize and thank everyone I would like to. In our scripture lesson we heard earlier, Paul begins that first, that third verse of the first chapter by saying, I thank God every time I remember you, constantly praying. And every one of my prayers for everyone, this is my closing words to you, my closing admonition to you, St. Trinity. So here goes. First of all, I want to thank all of those past and present individuals who heeded God's call and volunteered to lead a particular committee, or as Don Thurman wants us to say, team. And we've been saying team. Thank you, Don. Because they really are in the church, I think, more of team than committee. Thank you, all individuals, past and present. Thanks to all of you. I especially feel compelled to thank everyone past and present. But right now, I want to thank Betty. Betty Hilliard, you 
gifted, provided incredible spiritual leadership, especially as lay leader and chair of church council, or I mean the outreach team. Whenever there was a difficult decision to be made or special missions that needed to be done, my, I always went to Betty first. And because I knew that I was going to receive sound and spiritually grounded advice. Then there's Mary Payton, who admitted to me recently that even though it is a bit, in her words, weird, she is going to miss our conversations. I cannot agree more. Mary is a leader who faithfully told me not what I wanted to hear, but what I needed to hear. Leadership qualities every senior pastor needs on his or her team. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go grab the cross without my gloves. Where would Trinity be without Ed Farnell's tireless efforts to ensure that our campus is properly maintained, safe, and secure? Ed, I will miss your Sahara Desert dry sense of humor. And someone whom I trusted enough to occasionally sit down and share my thoughts on occasional frustrations with. Thank you, Ed. Warren Benson. Enough said. <laughs> I cannot think of a more trusted leader to step up and volunteer to chair SPRC during this time of transition, not to mention the challenging times we as the church are experiencing with so many critical decisions that need to be made and have been made. Trinity, I don't have to tell you that we are in great hands. You are in great hands with Warren leading SPRC. Divine intervention or coincidence? Hmm. I have to acknowledge and thank Marty Summerford for stepping up and chairing the Child Care Advisory Board. Whenever there were questions, situations needing the board to get involved in, Marty was always a trusted and respected resource for me to call and dialogue with. I am sure that all would agree that one of the biggest concerns as we entered the uncharted waters of this pandemic were financial and Trinidad, I'm sure all financial team members, finance team members would agree how much Eddie Wingard has done patiently and competently leading us these past few months and deserves much credit for where we are today financially. Thanks. Thank you, Eddie. Then there is Bob Wood. And of course, you cannot mention Bob without thanking and recognizing Pamela. Thanks for your support and words of encouragement, as well, Bob, as the occasional conversations which greatly helped during my tenure at Trinity. Your ideas and your out-of-the-box thinking as church council chair greatly shaped and helped us to get through times, especially the difficult past few months. Thank you. For all of the spiritual leaders I just mentioned, I echo the words of Paul when I say that I thank God every time I remember all of you constantly praying with joy and every one of my prayers for all of you, and now I need to express my heartfelt gratitude to two doctors. Not my ENT or lower back doctors, but doctors Don Hilliard and Richard Conant. A pastor could not ask for more competent and respected team members for which I am eternally grateful. 
Betty, you got to give him a hug for me. Thank you. And I also thank my God every time I remember the following. Stephen Ministries is such a critical and needed ministry which empowers the laity. So thank you, Luann Kraft and Brenda Crane, for your leadership in this truly powerful and life-changing ministry. Dolores Snellgrove, thank you for always being there on the sidelines, offering words of encouragement and support. You will be greatly missed. You worked closely with me during those sometimes overwhelming tasks associated with new members, not just with the classes, but helping integrate them into the Trinity Church family. Thank you, Dolores. Speaking of big fans, thank you to our biggest fans and supporters, David and Jean Ann Suggs. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to my hugs from Suggs here, whenever that's going to be. Ilona and I always look forward to breaking bread together at your house where we sure had much fun with the three philosophers, didn't we? Speaking of Dave Suggs, I would be remiss not to thank the Hardy Boys, which met faithfully every Monday at 8 o'clock at Hardy's. Guys, and they were all guys, you will never know how therapeutic it was for me to go to a venue where I could be just Clyde Scott, not Pastor Clyde. Thank you. The Bible says that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. In the context of my years as senior pastor, I feel compelled to express my heartfelt gratitude to my first and last associate pastors, Chrissy Pendergrass Reeves and Joey Gambrell. You both were like sponges soaking up ministerial procedures and policies and were always open to my coaching and mentoring to help develop your leadership skills. Thank you. And you both, both of you, have extremely bright futures as spiritual leaders. I spoke earlier about the need for us to think outside the box and be creative in order for us as a church to continue to touch people's lives and facilitate spiritual growth. And I can't think of two individuals who have done much better than Kimberly Burns and Hope Dove have done as our directors of children's and youth ministries. Although being only part-time, 20-hour-a-week employees, the past few months both were extremely creative and remained connected with our children and youth above and beyond what any of us could ever have imagined. Thank you, Kimberly, who's on her way to Ohio right now and Hope, who's going to meet me for lunch Tuesday at noon. Trinity, many churches have individuals who work selflessly behind the scenes, like Danny Hanna. Thanks for being there, Danny, each Sunday morning to prepare the Welcome Center for the day's activities. Both you and Sandy consistently devote tireless energy to your Sunday school class and understand that to be successful and, successful and effective Sunday school needs to be more than just Sunday mornings. Oh, did I mention Get Fit? Thanks, Sandy. Speaking of Sunday school class, when middle-aged women ask for my Recommendation for Sunday school class to attend. My first response was always the women's Sunday school class in the youth building under the leadership of Ginny Hutto. Ginny, I cannot think of enough words to express how much I will miss you 
and your often frank and accurate humor and insights. You epitomize what a true woman of God looks and acts like. Continue to listen to God's voice. I believe he has great plans for you, Jenny. And becoming a lay servant is just the beginning. Speaking of great plans which God has for individuals, thank you. Blaine Harvey, whose last name for years I thought was Santangelo. <laughs> for being my go-to youth when I needed prayer and short devotion. I trusted you so much that, as you know, I affectionately called you Pastor Blaine. And I must mention another youth, Gracie Tooten, who I got to know and respect during confirmation a few years ago. Blaine and Gracie, God has great plans, especially for the two of you. Listen and obey his voice as you age, and you will be successful at whatever he has planned for you. A special thanks to four individuals who faithfully attended and participated in my pastor's discipleship group, namely Ashley Wilson, Clark Cox, Michelle Duncan, and Nancy Lewis. Thank you. To all of you who volunteer at CAB and other community and city nonprofit organizations, thank you. Thanks to those 133 members who joined Trinity in the three and a half short years which I served as your senior pastor. Yes, that's 38 members a year we averaged. And I encourage all of you to remain active at Trinity, especially after my departure. And remember that we attend church not to worship the pastor, but God. Aw, oh, shucks. Here I go, Darren Rhodes, Gary and Ann Bader, Bill and Dot Lackey, Robin, Donald Owens, Joyce and Bruce Beebe, Gordon, God rest his soul, and Michelle Dobson. Bo and Pat Gallagher, Steve and Debbie Vonville, Dan and Kathy, Kathy and Walter Griffin, Hannah Laura and Dan Simmons, Buddy and Marie Price, Susie Carlson, Bill Shives, Minnie Campbell, Judy Bailey, Don Thurman, thank all of you for your unwavering support and acts of kindness. I saved the best for last. For your tireless and selfless spirit, not to mention your devotion to myself as a senior pastor, thanks for being a sounding board. And as we sometimes say, my Jiminy Cricket right here, advising me not to overreact under certain challenging times and to always show grace and empathy to those with whom I did not always see eye to eye with. There's no better pastor's wife, pastor present. Sorry, Betty. And I'm eternally grateful for your kind, gentle, compassionate, and humble spirit. Trinity, we are not just saying goodbye, but until we meet again, because that is still in the future, when all will be able to be gathered safely together again and show our true affection with love, hugs, and tears. I close with these words of St. Paul and address them to all of you. 
Trinity, I thank God every time I remember you and constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. And I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion. Trinity, I leave you with four words which have become a theme, the theme for the pandemic, I believe, for Trinity. And you know how to respond when I say those three words, those four words, you respond with three. Peace be with you. I've got this. One last time, Trinity, peace be with you. Thank you, Pastor Clyde. Let us all stand and give Pastor Clyde a round of applause for his faithful service for our country and for Trinity for the past three years. We do have several in our congregation this morning that we need to lift up in prayer. We need to remember Wayne and Denise Whittington, Mary Ann Hollis and Linda Page as they continue to battle some health issues, but also we need to celebrate that there's also healing going on in their lives. And of course, we continue to pray for Pastor Clyde and Alona as they begin on their new journey today. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Creator God, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind, and spirit through loving your creation and our brothers and sisters. Open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the needs of the church and the world. Heavenly Father, this morning we lift up to you Wayne and Denise Whittington, Mary Ann Hollis, and Linda Page. You know what is going on in each of their lives at this time. Bring your healing arms and wrap them tight. Bring your comforting arms and wrap them tight around them as well. And we give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that you have been present in their lives and have brought healing, uh, healing into their lives. Please continue to be with them. And Heavenly Father, this morning, we also lift up Pastor Clyde and Alona. We give you thanks for their wonderful years of service to us here at Trinity and to our great nation. We ask that you walk hum with them humbly during this new path that they embark on today. Watch over them. Protect them. Watch over their family and protect their family as well. And Heavenly Father, now we lift up those on our hearts and in our minds that need your prayer as well. Holy One, hear our prayers and make us faithful stewards of the fragile bounty of this earth so that we may be entrusted with the riches of heaven. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Trinity, go now in peace, and may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forever. Go now in peace. Yeah.